So while you can't be perfectly sure that somebody that's wearing an Omega Speedmaster or GMT Master might be into watches, there are certain brands that are dead giveaways that the person that's wearing that watch is probably deep into the weeds of watch collecting. And in this video, we look at seven brands that are dead giveaways that the person wearing them is really into watches. Now we have done a few different episodes on this in the past, it's been a few years now, but if there's a brand that is not mentioned here, chances are it may have been included in a previous installment, and there are many different brands to include, so we're not going to be able to cover all of them. We have seven here, and another point of criteria that I'm just going to mention is they can't be so unknown, and we're not looking at a really quick upstart brand, looking for brands that have some staying power to some degree, but maybe just aren't as well known as others across the industry, and our dead giveaways that for those that decide to wear them, uh, really indicates that they're into watches deeply. But if you are interested in looking at kind of more of a comprehensive guide to watch brands in the industry, check out the article in the description down below. It's a list of 52 of the best luxury watch brands in all of watchmaking and brands that you should know in 2024. This list includes a wide variety of styles of watch brands, highlights on their history, key references, and a fun fact about each one of the brands that you can bring up in a conversation at your next party. I'm sure these are going to work. As an example, did you know that Tag Heuer is one of the select few brands to be worn by James Bond? in a film. Specifically, Timothy Dalton wore a quartz-powered Tag Heuer Night Diver model in 1987's The Living Daylights. I'm telling you, whip that out at a party and people might be very impressed. Very specific type of party though. But if that sounds interesting to you, check out the article in the description down below. So to kick us off here, we have our first brand coming from Germany. This is Tutima. So Tutima was formed in 1927 by Dr. Ernst Kurtz, through the merger of two companies, this is the UROFA and the UFAG, which are basically long abbreviations for a long German word that I am not going to be able to pronounce without many people making fun of me. At the time of its genesis, Germany and Saxony were like many of what was to come for the rest of the world, facing some economic turmoil. However, in a similar resilience that has become an embodiment of the region broadly, Tutima still resides today in Glasuta. The name Tutima is derived from Latin, which translates to English to roughly mean safe or secure, a phrase that now goes hand in hand with the brand's production of military watches, such as their 1940s pilot chronograph, which had some of the most strict shock and accuracy testing standards for watches of the period. They also produced a new military chronograph in the 1980s known as the reference 798, being a standard issue watch for the German Air force in the years to come, and this design approach has become a massive part of their design DNA of tool-oriented watches such as their popular M27Cs. Also intriguing though is their ability to produce elevated horology with lines like their Patria, as well as their own minute repeater. This is a brand that is one of the very few still doing this level of watchmaking in the region of Glasuta. Next, we take a look at the brand Hanhart. Founded in Switzerland in 1882, the brand has had its operation bounce back and forth over the years between Switzerland and Germany. The brand's earliest mark on the industry came by way of its stopwatches. One notable example being a 1924 stopwatch that was created as an accurate but more affordable alternative to Swiss offerings of the same period, being used in competition to time athletes. However, what laid the groundwork for their modern reputation was their chronographs, an easy transition given their early development and specialty for stopwatches. This first wrist chronograph came from the brand in 1938 with the release of the Monopusher Caliber 40, designed with a simple dual register layout and other design details that would become important going forward and made possible the release of countless chronographs in the coming decade. However, the brand's icon would come in the 1950s with the release of the Hanhart 417, a military chronograph used by the German Air Force of the time, but also became a watch family famously enjoyed by the King of Cool, Steve McQueen. The watches to this day are priced very aggressively at attainable price points, just over $2,000, making them an amazing in-the-no purchase while also featuring different case options, including a 39 millimeter version of the 417 ES. To follow is the Swiss brand Volcane, which was founded way back in 1854. Volcane as a brand has become known primarily for one watch, the Cricket, a mechanical alarm released in 1947. Although this was not the first attempt at a mechanical alarm watch, it was arguably the first to see consistent standardized production that made it to the public, coming up with an ingenious design approach that ensured optimal timekeeping while enabling energy to power the alarm. The name comes from its tone of that alarm, so not much surprise there, pretty on the nose, 
But the cricket's early success also can be attributed to finding its way on the wrists of US presidents. First with Harry Truman back in the 1950s, who was gifted the watch by the White House Press Photographies Association with a small inside joke being engraved on the case back. It read, in quotes, one more please, basically referring to the commonly yelled statement at press events, trying to get one more shot of the president before he moves on. This basically started the tradition of seeing many different US presidents that would wear the watch over the years. Lyndon B. Johnson apparently liked the watch so much that he would commonly gift it to people. It was dozens, if not hundreds of people that he gifted a Volcane Cricket to, apparently. However, despite its notable wearers, Volcane had trouble navigating the tumultuous time that came in the 1970s with the quartz crisis that plagued most mechanical watch brands throughout this period, leading to the brand to be relatively dormant in activity until the 21st century, where the brand has changed hands in ownership and now under its latest ownership from a Luxembourg investment firm, the brand is now poised to gain appreciation among a new generation of collectors with the help of Guillaume Lede, a name you might be familiar with if you look at some of these revival brands in the sphere. The Cricket now has been revived with its own manufacturer caliber alarm movement, clean looks that feel ripped directly from the past, while being positioned as the most attainable Swiss mechanical alarm watch on the market available at retail today that I am currently aware of. To follow along is another tool wash oriented brand with legitimate history with Fortis. Founded in 1912, Fortis is probably best known for their development of watches that were made to withstand the impediments of traveling to space. First in the 1960s, when the brand produced their mission ready space Matic for NASA's Gemini program. However, more notably and probably more directly tied to the mission when it was developed, Fortis forever etched its name in space watch history by partnering with the Russian Space Agency in 1994 with the production of their most well-known watch by a pretty far margin, I would say, the Cosmonaut. The modern home of the Cosmonaut design language is now going to be living within the Novonaut, powered by the Merck 17 caliber, a caliber that is, I would say, depending on where you draw the line, a manufactured caliber. It was developed in collaboration with La Joux Pere featuring column wheel and being tested fittingly, you guessed it, in space. Now, when we think of the 1950s dive watches, we quickly will bring up brands like Rolex or Blancpain. However, this next brand was right there with them blazing the trail for dive watches to follow. Zodiac was founded in Switzerland in 1882 and is known for their legendary Seawolf of 1953. Surprisingly, at the time, the original Seawolf was priced right in line with its more luxurious counterparts, a testament to its quality and being a leader in the early infancy of dive watch design. Zodiac, along with being commonly seen on the wrist of divers during the period, the brand also saw heavy use by US military during the Vietnam War when their Seawolves and Aerospace GMTs became readily available at PXs. Today, as Rolex and Blancpain have risen to the highest levels of luxury in the hype culture, the Zodiac Seawolf, now generally known as the Super Seawolf, remains attainable in comparison with the starting price around $1,200. The modern Super Seawolf comes in with a versatile 40 millimeter diameter. I have different inserts, color combinations, limited edition options, and Swiss calibers on the inside. Going from one brand that has roots dating back to the 19th century to one that had its inception in the 21st, here we have Resins. Established in 2010 in Belgium, a country not typically associated with watchmaking to say the least, it was founded by an industrial designer, Benoit Mentiens. And the name serves as combining two words together, Renaissance and Essence. Now, as you would assume from intersecting these two terms, the brand is known for its unconventional approach to the centuries old art of watchmaking. Specifically, resonance watches typically showcase a crownless design, an eye-catching dial seated beneath the safety of a dome sack sapphire crystal, and in several cases is optimized for its visibility and legibility with the use of oil underneath the said crystal to eliminate reflections. It is unlike pretty much anything else you are going to see in watchmaking, and mechanically the watch utilizes an additional drive module mechanism that completely reworks the front half of the watch to display the time and contains over 200 components. And while the entire modern resins collection utilizes a similar visual design format, time display, and shares a number of technical innovations, it is the Type 3 that probably in most ways defines what Resonance is all about in the eyes of enthusiasts and collectors. And if you are interested, I do have a full video covering that watch on the channel. It is a 
really crazy watch. And for our final brand, we have Moritz Grossmann. Now the namesake founder was born in Dresden, Germany back in 1826. And after finishing his technical training and gaining real world experience as a journeyman in London, Hamburg, Paris, Stockholm, Copenhagen, and Switzerland, Grossmann set up his own shop in German watchmaking Mecca that is Glashütte in 1854. Being among the first along with Ferdinand Adolf Longa in developing the region's prowess for watchmaking. After a career as a watchmaker and even helping to set up the prestigious German school of watchmaking that was in operation for 114 years, Grossmann suddenly died in 1885, leaving a legacy that would remain all but dormant for over a century. In 2008, a watchmaker and entrepreneur, Christine Hooter, purchased the Moritz Grossman name and set out to preserve and expand the established legacy of the brand's namesake. Having gained business experience at other Glass Hooter based brands, such as Gio and Langa, Hooter was uniquely situated to take on the task, releasing Moritz Grossman's first modern watches in 2010. In the years since, Moritz Grossman now proudly sits on the hill in the heart of Glass Hooter, being among the greats of the entire region with impeccably finished dials, hands, and and calibers, including engraving on their balance bridges that I would argue might be the best the entire region has to offer, which if you know a thing or two about this area of the country, you know that that is a very high praise and statement. And if you want more of a taste for what Morris Grossman has to offer, we actually have a full video put in the description. It also has a Kerry Vuta line and dial on that watch, so pretty spectacular. But all right, guys, that's all we have for this video. If you learned something new about a brand you were not as familiar with, uh, please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell icon. Also, you can check out some of our older videos on this subject. We've looked at a variety of different brands in this series. There's plenty more to also look at. And brands are kind of a dead giveaway. If you see one of these on somebody's wrist, it's like, okay, I can go approach them and start to talk my nerdy language with them and have no pushback. So that's the whole premise here with this video. Also, definitely check out teddybaldestar.com, full authorized dealer of 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, and full factory warranty for all the products that we offer. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.